For this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to use ratios to make a decision. And uh, let's start with a, a, a school. A middle school has a dance. And at the dance, 40 boys show up and 60 girls show up. And uh, so the student council says, well, that's kind of nice, but we'd like to increase the rate of participation of the boys. The boys are coming, but we'd like more boys to come at a higher rate. So they do a big advertising campaign, and then at the second dance, sure enough, more boys show up, 50 boys, and 100 girls show up. So the big question is, well, did the rate of participation of the boys increase? And uh, so on the, on the surface, it sure looks like the boys increased. So, yeah, the student council met their goal. They, they sure increased the rate of participation of the boys. But if you use ratios, you're going to get a, a different story. And it, it might be kind of a surprising answer to you. So uh, let's, let's take this ratio and uh, this dance and write it as a ratio of 40 to 60. And let's take this dance and write it as a ratio uh, let's see, 50 to 100. All right. Now, if we're going to compare, uh, we want to see if the, the dance really did increase the rate of participation of the boys. Uh, one way to compare ratios is to get a common denominator. So let's get a common denominator. And in this case, 300 would be a nice, handy, common denominator. So 60 times 5 is 300. So 40 times 5 is 200. And then over here, 100 times 3 is 300, so 50 times 3 is 150. Now why? What, what kind of information are we going to get by comparing or getting common denominators? Well, what does the 200 mean? Well, 400 stands for boys, so 200 stands for boys, 300 stands for girls. Over here, 300 stands for girls, and 150 stands for boys. So by finding a common denominator, we see that at this rate, 40 to 60, if 300 girls showed up, then 200 boys would show up. And over here, at this ratio, 50 to 100, means if 300 girls show up, 150 boys will show up. So we can see, by comparing with common denominators these two dances, we can see that dance one actually had a higher rate of participation of the boys than dance two. So even though the number of boys went up, the rate of participation dropped. So that's when we were able to make that decision because we got common denominators. Well, if we get common numerators, we're going to find the exact same story. So we're going to, once again, we're going to do write the two ratios, 40 to 60 and 50 to 100. This time, let's get a common numerator. And let's say uh, we get a common numerator of, let's see, uh, 200. We could do 200. So 40 times 5 gives us 200. So 60 times 5 gives us 300. So that's 200 and 300. And then over here, 50 times 4, 100 times 4, means we've got 200 and 400. So how can we use this to make our decision? Well, 40 and 60, 40 boys, 60 girls. So this means 200 boys, 300 girls. And over here, this 50 to 100 means 50 boys, 50 girls. So 200 means 200 boys. 400 means 400 girls. So what, how do we use this to make a decision? Well, over here, if 200 boys showed up, 300 girls showed up. Over here, at this rate, for 200 boys, that means 400 girls. And so what we can see is 200 is closer to 300 here. So this ratio is larger than this ratio. So this actually tells us that the ratio of boys is higher at the first dance than it is at the second dance. And so once again, we can see that the rate of participation of the boys actually dropped instead of getting bigger. 
Um, we could also use unit rates, but I'm going to leave for a different video how to get how to get unit rates and how to use unit rates to compare these two ratios. And uh, that's it.